Hello my friends, welcome to Into the Korean channel and today we have something well sort of usual because I uh, quite often review uh, the smart plugs but unusual the way I acquired it. Uh, once uh, a blue moon I dropped by at some uh, local uh, value village or thrift store stores and stuff like that and I look around because for example I need some parts for my Samsung TV so I hope like gonna get it sometime I see some audio equipment but this time in a pile of junk I found this and I thought at first it was just a regular power outlet when I look at this it's like so those are just you know outlets but turn out to be this is not turn out to be this is a smart plug okay Wi-Fi smart P1 free whatever that's supposed to mean but if you look here this is model SHPA1 so for 299 I decided to I'll give it a shot and I decided to buy this apparently for smart plugs and today our uh, goal would be to take a look what the heck is this we're definitely gonna go straight to and um, tear down because uh, I don't want to install any uh, Chinese um, apps and stuff but here we see basic jaws okay uh, and I assume this crap gonna work with smart life uh, application uh, in order to actually confirm that we have to take a look inside so guys uh, stay with me if you want to take a look what the heck inside of these guys and um, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you like my content yeah and comment please all right so let's proceed we only would need one of them 24 months warranty I'm curious Ooh, that's jazzy I like this actually oh I didn't is it sticker yeah I don't know but wait it's a Kiowa sword I like I like the uh, this thing. This probably worse worse to me uh, a lot because I like a uh, nice design solutions. This is probably the most beautiful thing out of all these. Uh, but anyway, so what we have here construction is here is the prongs for main and ground. Uh, here is the outlet, a little LED, and the button. So button turn on on and off and stuff like that. It looks like design is pretty straightforward there is a rectangular body and here is the lid and it's either either a uh, ultrasonically welded or just glued so we're gonna check the theory what's going on for that we're gonna take a knife and just run a few times like right here not to cut yourself I think it's already start splitting apart Oops, yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. Now we're gonna take something a little bit more substantial, like for example this guy. Nope, not yet. Looks like it's welded much more right on here. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, it's cri cri crinkling, so that's a, it's a good sign. Okay, this is probably a little bit too heavy duty. Let's take something a little bit less heavy duty. Okay, that's it. We are... it's glued. It's glued. I see the st strings of glue. It's just glued. That's alright. We can re-glue it, no problem. Easy to get in. Probably as easy on this side too. Probably not as easy. Right, after not much of a persuasion, we just get it popped out, just like so. 
yeah apparently it was just glued on a perimeter a little notch here indicating the the position how to uh, insert it so we have is it can i just remove this or i have to or it's oh there is a little screw here what else hmm it's not getting go, not going through I thought you can just push it out like this out of this but it's not cooperating whatever I don't see any more screws right Yeah, I just see another side on other sides and try to a little bit kind of give it a notch Nudge a little bit, nudge, nudge it Oh my bad Actually looks like this is a part of this and then it's protrudes like this terminal, so they protrudes right here and they just solder it. I wouldn't be able to. Oh, maybe I. Yeah, it's hard to understand if it's. Especially this ground terminal, I don't think it's getting completely through unless. <sighs> no, no, I can't push that. Anyways, I don't think there is much going on on the other side. I don't think. Yeah, so there's some traces. Alright, so anyways, let's just forget about this. So let's focus on this side. Alright, so after trying for quite a while and um, try to kind of separate these guys, looks like no, it won't be possible because they inserted from this side through this plastic and then solder it to this board. That's it. Unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. So either I had to desolder all these three pins to get through this is kind of interesting solution instead of uh, yeah it's like an extra manual step but the only downside of this particular construction that I, that I won't be able to get to this thing right I really want to get inside and understand what kind of controller board is this and the ways they solder it as you see it's just facing this little capacitor, 10 microfarad capacitor, and you you can reach. Yeah, so, ha, huh, bummer. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, what is this? So, uh, what do we have on the. Um, let's just talk about the. First of all, over here it has says Hyleton 3112. It's probably version or revision or name of this thing. So we have a uh, mains input here, right? So this is th sorry, this is mains input. These guys are not necessarily straightforward. So uh, uh, live or neutral will be switched by relay. Maybe even both for safety. Uh, all right, so. So this terminal right here and these are not connected. So this is input goes to relay, for example, and it switches this and that and the same for for that one. The grounds obviously just pass through. I'm not even sure if all this just is properly grounded. That's really hard to tell. So we have a mob for protection. We have a bridge rectifier. We have fusible resistor again. It's good. We ha I think we have a interference suppression capacitor there's no inductor here okay then we have what kind of capacitor is this 10 microfarad 400 volt right here it's main filtering capacitor and we have probably this is the driver for yeah this is driver and then we have 50 volt this is auxiliary power probably for for something yeah, 50 microfarad, uh, 50 volt capacitor, 4% microfarad. Then uh, we have. Um, it's a Zener diet, uh, really hard to tell what is this. Especially not having access to the bottom because obviously it's a 
it's one-sided load, but but some bunch of the traces, bunch of the traces are in the bottom. This button, they are driven connected to microcontroller, driven by microcontroller. So this is highly likely 3.3 volt um, regulator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have 470 microfarad 10 volt capacitor, and we have inductor for filtering as well. And this is uh, on the output side. And this is a linear regulator, so there is no switching here, but this is clearly an inductor. Okay, then we have this uh, micro, presum presumably this is ESP mm, board, just need to know what the heck is that. Then we have all this just to drive the, drive the relay, yeah, probably it's driven by what, how many volts, doesn't say. Yeah, probably 5 volt or something driven by 5 volt because there is not like I mean, yeah, microcontroller probably need the 5 5 volt tolerable or works with 5 volt. I'm, I'm not sure I said 3.3 volt, but really it's really hard to tell. Let me see how uh, what kind of my, the voltage regulator here. Yeah, it says 3.3 volts. It's, um, uh, it says AMS 1117, 3.3. So yeah, 3.3 volt. So I'm not sure what the voltage. Look at this jaws. <laughs> Someone just like melted part of the relay. And look at this. Someone just melted part of the button here. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, uh, this microcontroller and Wi-Fi board is highly likely ESP8266 and I, why I know this, but I'll show you. <laughs> Take a look at this, <laughs> but that's not the main uh, question. question is that we can configure Tasmata to run on this guy. Yeah, so essentially this proof this is ESP8266 and this thing can run the motor. And that's the only thing what I would like to learn today. Uh, the only problem here that reaching the serial ports in order to reprogram this guy would be probably not easy because some of those pins are very hard um, to reach. So after long investigation, I figured out that the pinout here is not really cooperating as well. Uh, so uh, what do we have uh, essentially? Uh, here we're gonna have 3.3 volt, right? This guy and this guy gonna be uh, area RX. But technically, on this side we have a ground and TX right there. So yeah, it's not not. <laughs> the best not the best here so the uh, positioning unfortunately so i have to think about how i'm gonna go with that one otherwise i would have to un uh, you know unsolder those all right guys i think the main goal of this video is to prove that this thing is uh, this motor compatible by opening up and checking the uh, microcontroller uh, obviously I could have just looked in the internet because it's already obviously uh, done by someone but I couldn't find many um, photos or videos what's inside here so technically it is possible but looks like this first of all this smart plug is not that popular secondly it's actually complicated to reach those serial ports but uh, I'll think about it a little bit more maybe I make another video how do I actually program this thing with the smart or anything else but original firmware so guys, I think that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment under my videos. Stay safe and ciao.